How's it going folks, it's Rob here and today's video is a bit of an exciting one for me uh, because I'm releasing our introduction to backyard DIY aquaponics guide with the help from the folks over at Retrieve. Thank you very much team, it's been fun working with you but um, yeah most of the hard work is over and I'm about to launch it actually. You can um, have a look at it now, the link will be down in the description. So what I thought I'd do today is just give you a bit of a quick run through on how the guide works and the, all the fantastic functions that it offers and then um, yeah, I'll give you a quick look at the aquaponics system and some of the stuff we've already harvested today. So I'll stop faffing about and we'll check out this guide. So here you go folks, this is the welcome screen to my introduction to Backyard DIY Aquaponics. Uh, now it's pretty basic, uh, we have the guide home, we have DIYs, this is where all the material is housed and you can see all the different subheadings naturally. We start with what is aquaponics and how does it work, starting aquaponics system and then aquaponics system design, nine um, essential components so you get the idea. Uh, the majority of the information here at the moment is existing videos and there is some unique content that I've made already and I'll be continuing to add to that. Uh, the beauty of this function is though you can type in a search inquiry or you can press the microphone button and go solids lifting outlet and then we'll get some search results for that and we can scroll through a little bit of a table of contents. Uh, we'll just go with this main one hey and have a bit of a gander at that. So yeah, you've got a basic explanation on what's going on. We can follow along with a transcript. And with this transcript, and just bring the video back, with this transcript, we can jump to wherever we want and basically read along, see something that interests us and jump down to that area there. So yeah, very useful in that respect. Oh, by the way, a few folks who like to watch in bed while your partner is falling asleep, you can also follow along with closed captions. Um, so that's pretty fantastic, I think. Uh, not only that, it has been translated into a couple of different languages. So you can follow along with Spanish, or if you really want, um, you can listen to me in Spanish as well. Pode ser adicionado em tanques de mineralização aerados que e torna os elementos mais disponíveis para as plantas e adicionados de volta ao. O sistema em uma data posterior. Não vou entrar nisso neste. Clique aqui e será um para a trilha então. Os dois mais comuns. So we'll just pause that now. Yeah, so I think it's going to be, whoops, just gone back home. So I think it's going to be very helpful for you folks out there who are just getting into aquaponics and yeah, just want to be able to jump to bits and pieces of information that um, you think will help you out. Um, so it's one of those things, it will be added to, as I said, continually. Uh, we'll flip this camera around, hey? So what really sold me with jumping on board with these retrieve folks is the fact that I can add content to this guide down the line. Uh, there's already some um, parts lists I'd like to add and also a couple of charts and bits and pieces. So I'll be looking at doing that in the next week or two. I'll also too, um, it's totally interactive in that you guys can ask me questions. I haven't quite worked out a price on that yet, but you get two free ones and I'll be um, speaking to the folks at Retrieve next week, probably should have already done that already, um, on just a, a small fee if you want to contact me and ask a short question. Uh, don't ask me to design a system for you. It's just basically an easy way for you to jump the queue and get your question answered within 24 hours um, because I can't keep up with all the comments on YouTube. Very sorry, I try to, but I just can't. It's a fact of life. Also too, if you do see any holes in the guide, contents, the content that you'd like added, um, I will be um, taking suggestions. Keep in mind that I only like to add information that I have practical knowledge on. Um, so don't ask me about commercial aquaponics or anything like that. It's just not going to happen. I'm just pretty much all sharing the knowledge of um, what I've learnt in my own backyard system. Uh, apparently it's helped a few people out, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I might stop waffling on about the guide now, give you a bit of a look at um, a small harvest we've done today and show you how the system's ticking along. To begin with, I'll give you a bit of a look at these blueberry tomatoes. Uh, they're actually doing rather well. The plant's taken off over the last week or so. I've been harvesting probably about half a bowl full, well, this size bowl, every couple of days. I have started to see a couple with blemishes on them, so I don't think it's Queensland fruit fly. Something else is getting in there and stinging them. But yeah, we're not a great deal. Um, most of them are coming off fairly nice. We are picking them semi-ripe, starting to get a little bit squishy. We have had some that have come off bright red, um, but these guys, I think I'm just going to take them off early so we don't have um, too many with the little stings in them. I have bought some bush beans to put in the system because we're getting a few gaps where I've cleaned out bits and pieces. And we are seeing, I think I showed this last week, a load of broccoli come on. And we have a couple like this one over here that really do need to come off today. So um, they'll, oh, I might, no, I'll take him off tonight and we'll put him in the fridge. 
Uh, I've already taken off a couple of bok choy from around here. So we're going to have bok choy and what else to Bianca say? A bok choy and silver beet um, in a bit of a stir fry tonight. Uh, this little cabbage is starting to split right at the top here. So we might have to pull him off early. Now this one over here, oh, I don't want to pull him around too much. There we go, that won't damage him. He's getting a really nice firm head, um, so we'll be pulling him out very soon. Um, the other cabbage we made up the other night was absolutely fantastic. It's basically green apple, onions, um, cabbage, and some ghee or butter. And we just give that a little bit of a fry up and let it wilt down. Absolutely fantastic side to things like pork belly or um, Kira likes it next to her German natwurst and that sort of thing. So uh, the rest of the system ticking along nicely, seeing less and less evidence of nutrient deficiency. So whatever we're doing is uh, working out right for us. And the fish, I was hoping to film this earlier so you could see him. Oh, you can see him down in there. It's a bit tricky sometimes with the light. Uh, but they're, they're just cruising along. Uh, they've only been fed three times this week just because the water temp has been fairly low. So we'll leave them alone. And yes, the bell siphon video is coming out later on tonight. Uh, over here, I've cleaned out a lot of the older um, onions, um, the shallots, green onions. We've just been chopping off, not shallots technically, um, green onions. We've just been chopping them off and harvesting them over and over. Cleaned them out this morning. And I noticed while we were here, we are getting a load of these little fellas. There we go, the little black onion aphids. They're a real pain in the butt. Um, you can just come along and squish them. And that pretty much will, um, is guaranteed to um, knock them off. But a lot of them get down in the little nooks and crannies of the leeks. And I just saw a big outbreak over here. So when I see big infestations like this, I just like to give them a mass squish. And there's a couple that are trying to um, roll away down here. So just give them a bit of a manual squish. So a little bit later on, I'll be um, spraying things like the broccoli over there and also this purple sprout. And when I do that, I add in a little bit of peppermint soap into the dipole mix. And so I'll just spray these guys as well because soap is supposedly really good at washing off the protective coating of these aphids. And just to show you, there's a nice little um, cluster of them hiding out between the leaf there. So I'll be spraying that all down these little uh, nooks and crannies. The dipole's safe for us to eat. And yeah, we've eaten a lot of stuff with the um, peppermint soap spray on it. And we haven't really tasted any, you know, um, full on hints of the peppermint coming through. Uh, the chard, I was getting a little bit worried about this. I started to see some more burning on the outside of the leaves or basically uh, necrotic um, leaf margins, but that seems to have been rectified. There's an older leaf showing you the symptoms. I was worried that it could have been too much um, nitrate in the system, but things seem to have um, settled down. So I don't think that is the issue. I think it just could have been a culmination of all the other um, elements that we've been lacking in the system. And show you, we still haven't quite picked off this little um, yellow sweet pepper or capsicum. I think we might give him another day or so. We might pick him off Monday, I think. And yeah, there's another look at that nice head of broccoli over there. So lots of smaller heads are coming through here. We've got some there. Oh, didn't notice that one. That one should probably come off with the other because the head's starting to divide. Well, one thing I have noticed, we are seeing a lot of it down here and that is these little green onion chive seedlings. There's another one over there. I think they're the chives. Uh, we had a load go to um, seed up on the deck, so a lot of the seeds have come down here. Quickly before I go, the Aji Amarillo chili. The grandma, I have cut her right back. We've got a nice little bit of new growth coming through here. So fingers crossed she'll grow through. If not, we have loads of self-sown seedlings. Uh, basically a chili fell down, couldn't see it with all the mess down here, and has sprouted amongst where we had the ginger growing. So we'll have at least one <laughs> plant that does really well. And just down here below them is the ginger we had growing in the system. Um, so we're just going to let that overwinter down there and see how she goes next year. So there you go, folks. There's a bit of our walk through the guide. And hopefully by the time this video finishes, it will be live and you can check it out. And thanks to anyone who does decide to make a purchase. Uh, do keep in mind, it will be an ever-growing knowledge base. And if there are any gaps that you see after you purchase it, let me know. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully I'll be able to fill those gaps. And thank you very much for supporting the channel as well. We really appreciate it. And for you folks who are waiting for the Bell Siphon troubleshooting video, it should be uploaded and live in probably around about 18 hours time fingers crossed um, so check that out if you haven't subscribed already and you do want a notification when it's uploaded just um, hit that little subscribe button and then jump on over to the bell and hopefully YouTube will send you a notification 
But I will pretty much will leave it there. I do hope that you folks are all well and happy and your gardens are booming and aquaponics. And I will catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing. Uh, the beauty of this function is though you can type in a search inquiry or press the microphone button and go, whoops.